Look at this video. This is Michigan football staffer Connor Stallions. When Ohio State looks back to their sideline for the new play, he along with the other coaches and players on the sideline then hold up a signal telling the players on the field what's coming. Michigan then perfectly stops this Ohio State play. And Jim Harbaugh, Michigan's head coach, denies knowing any of this. But you can see he's right there on the sideline. And as you can see in this other image, Connor Stallions is right there, holding a laminated picture of something that most likely looks like the opposing team signs, with Jim Harbaugh right there as well. And with reports that Michigan has spent thousands of dollars on travel expenses scouting other teams, which if true is illegal, it's hard to believe that he didn't know anything. So it begs the question, why is a support staffer doing all of this? This scandal is rocking the college football world right now. And the program is under investigation into these serious cheating allegations. There's just so much to unpack here. Many people involved, many opinions. Some people think that Michigan did nothing wrong. So let's explain it all for you. Let's break down everything that's happened so far, what people in the college football world are saying about all this, and what might happen in the future. So this all started when two teams that played Michigan told Yahoo Sports that they knew that Michigan was stealing their signs. The NCAA launched an investigation into Michigan's football program for violating NCAA rules. This rule was in the NCAA Bylaw 11.6.1, which says off-campus in-person scouting of future opponents in the same season is prohibited. A lot of the talk is surrounding this one person, Connor Stallions, a Michigan support staffer who we saw on the sidelines earlier with a sheet of paper giving the signs to the coaches. So much so that the NCAA saw access to his laptop. And we'll get into how he ties into all of this later. But it's important to understand that knowing the signs of the opposing team is not inherently wrong. I mean, that is why people study film. You want to know what the other team's going to do. But the investigation is regarding to what lengths did the Michigan football program go to understand their opposing team. And the conversation in the sports media world, at least, is how ethical this sign stealing really is. But Coach Harbaugh's lawyer definitely doesn't think so. His lawyer, Tom Mars, told the Detroit News that Coach Harbaugh was just as surprised by the news reports about an NCAA sign stealing investigation as anyone else, and that he has no knowledge about prohibited sign stealing by anyone at Michigan or anything else that's been reported in today's news. Back to this guy, Connor Stallions, who was suspended on October 20th and will be for the entire duration of NCAA investigation. And according to this ESPN report, the Michigan football team has been using an elaborate scouting system to steal signs from future opponents since at least 2021. The Washington Post then reported that Connor Stallions used a public setting on his Venmo account to pay a network of sideline reporters, and that he purchased tickets to 12 big 10 schools. ESPN then reported that he has bought tickets to more than 30 games, even four out-of-conference games for teams Michigan might have faced in the college football playoffs. But the most interesting reporting from ESPN that I think makes this entire organization look bad is that the NCAA was sent an hour of video evidence that showed someone sitting in a seat that Stallions purchased, and that person was recording the home sideline. An hour of footage. That's damning evidence. I mean, we could just end the video right here. Doing that is not allowed. No one can really argue that. And if it doesn't get any worse for Connor Stallions, Sports Illustrated joined in on the reporting that Stallions had a Google Doc between 550 to 600 pages that contained the future of the Michigan Wolverines, which he called the Michigan Manifesto. And then Yahoo Sports reported that last year, TCU was tipped off about Michigan sign-stealing antics, that they had to resort to dummy signals during the game, which messed them up a lot. So it looks like a lot of coaches actually knew that Michigan was doing this well before all of this came out. But this is all assuming that all the reports are true. But are they? Sure, ESPN and the Washington Post reported some of these things, but the reality is that a lot of this information came from X. Yeah, that's right. This entire scandal is playing out right in front of our eyes on X. So maybe Stallions was just buying tickets for his buddies to watch the game. Maybe he wasn't actually violating the NCAA bylaws. Because it is weird how if he was doing all of that, why would he use a public Venmo by his name? And why would he buy tickets with his name? And why wouldn't he just burn the evidence before the NCAA confiscated his laptop? I could go on, but if you look into it, there are a lot of fishy parts to the story. But assuming all the evidence is true, it does look pretty bad right now. That same ESPN report from earlier also showed a Big Ten source saying that this is worse than both the Astros and the Patriots. But not everyone thinks it's that bad. Those that argue that it's not that bad say that sign stealing is just a natural part of the game, that doing so did not give Michigan an unfair advantage since every team has the opportunity to figure out the other team's signal. And well, I guess react like this on the field to let your team know about it. I mean, every team could do that. When Texas A&M coach Jimbo Fisher was asked about it, he said, that's our fault. You've got to change them up. When Colorado coach Deion Sanders was asked about it, he said this. What are your thoughts? Got to stop it. So that that's a little tough. I don't buy into a lot of this stuff that 
But you know darn well Emmitt Smith is getting the ball. You know darn well Mike Irvin is running the comeback. You know darn well Jay Novacek is going to do what he's going to do, and you couldn't stop it. While he is right, you still have to stop the play even if you know it. I think the real problem that most people have, and at least the NCAA has, is the extent to which Michigan went to figure this information out. I mean, if the evidence presented by everyone is true, then it does seem like they have violated the NCAA rules. But the real discussion is surrounding the ethics of all this. To spend this much money to travel to all the games. To say you don't know anything that happened even though you are the head coach. To possibly videotape the other team. If that's all true, that is unethical and not allowed. I presume that most people would agree. But the thing is, this could have all been prevented if college football just used headsets like the NFL. And the question is, will they finally add headset communication on the field between the coaches and players? And they come with uh, the headset. microphone helmet, whatever you, they call it. We've seen NFL use this technology on the sideline. We've seen college football invest tons of money in technology, and their schools invest tons of money into things like the locker rooms, for example. But for something that seems as important as communicating the play call from the coaches to the quarterback, college football teams don't use headsets for that and are left to do this, point fingers and hold up signs of feet. I have no idea what will happen. In fact, there's probably so much more that has come out by the time you're watching this. It's clear that college football needs to adapt some sort of technology. And if it comes out that Michigan did much more than what has already been reported, it becomes increasingly likely that Jim Harbaugh and his staff are not going to survive all this. And the talk about the Michigan football team and the student athletes changes from how great of a team they are to these looming cheating allegations. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe and watch this video right here on why everyone seems to be so obsessed with the Philadelphia Eagles Kelly Green jersey. It's pretty interesting. Check it out.